good evening. My name is Elizabeth Ferranti. My husband is Todd Wood. He is not here this evening because his position does not permit him to attend these types of proceedings. My husband and I are both attorneys. He has been an attorney in Warren County for 27 years. I have been an attorney in this county for 22 years. We each own our own business. We own property in three separate municipalities in this county. We pay our taxes. Most importantly, we are the parents of a seventh grader at Youngton. The administration is proposing a plan that punishes the outlying communities for the gross mismanagement by your predecessors. Closing the doors of Youngton continues this mismanagement. In 2012, the administration put together a packet that you were that you have received tonight, similar to the information that's in this FAQ. And in 2012, you may recall, that was the time when the consolidation of the elementary schools at Eisenhower area and Sheffield area be put into those high schools. There were projections of savings of over a 10-year period of $6.85 million in 2012 dollars. Now, using real numbers, your budgets, over those 10 years, the yearly school budget increased $28 million over that same 10-year period. So that means, if you do the math, the district spent the savings, the projected savings of 6.85, and $28 million over those 10 years for a total of $35 million. Also, in the years of 21 through 23, $2.5 million in increase for the salaries. And those are using real numbers, your budgets. And looking at the state audit of 2020, the highest portion of the long-term debt is pension service, followed closely behind by your bonds. Also in 2012, there was a projection of a reduction in administration of 3.5 individuals. But before the closure of those other schools, the elementary schools that merged into the high schools, we had 39 administrators. At consolidation, we had 38 administrators. The promise was not kept. Last year, by your own board doc, we had 49 administrators. You are cost-cutting in the wrong places. <laughs> you are missing the obvious. If we are a diminishing school population, why are we gaining administrators? Why is our budget exponentially climbing? Take the 10 administrators that you've added over the last six or seven years. Each one of them, and I'm going to use easy numbers, $100,000 a year in salaries. Take $100,000 in additional costs for FICA, for unemployment, for workers' comp, health insurance, and take $100,000 for the pension plan that you're all paying into because that's, those, are, those are the numbers we're paying into. That equals $300,000 per administrator. $3 million in savings in one year. As one of the greatest American authors said, and that author was Mark Twain, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Thank you.
Uh, my name is Troy McFaith. Uh, recently, I retired as a general contractor, worked in this area my whole life. Uh, I also worked on residential and commercial buildings uh, for the last 43 years. I, come, I did do contracting with the district for ceiling replacements and in most all the schools. I contracted also to move classroom furniture and learning supplies. According to the fact sheet, I like numbers. You guys give me lots of numbers, we'll use them. Whether they're true or not, we'll still use them. <laughs> According to the fact sheet, sewage DEP reported the maximum population of Eisenhower building to be 1,600. According to the sheet also, Eisenhower has 757 students and Youngsville has 207 students. That equals 964. Information also shows 30 teachers for 6 through 12, 24 teachers for K through 5. That equals 54. Now, 964 students plus 54 teachers equals 1,018. <laughs> 12 over the maximum by DEP. Now, let's add the administration, principals, vice principals, resource officers, teachers' aides, food service workers, custodial staff. Oh, and let's not forget any additional staff needed for those additional 207 students. That would be well over the limit. What will it cost to uh, add or extend the existing system? Don't know. Uh, also, as noted in the Torn Times Observer, there is a need for a maintenance working foreman that has or can obtain a certificate of drinking and sewage, or for drinking and sewage. This person, of course, would need to be paid more because of the certification and for the work done. And there is also continued expense in recertification and continuing education. Now, let's go to the water system. It needs monitored and tested daily, weekly. Chemicals added, filters change. Some on a daily basis. What is the cost to test the chemicals, the filters, the person's monitor? Right to know has been filed, and yes, the response will come October 17th. Looking deeper into these systems and finding out the hard operation cost and maintaining of both the water and the sewage over time may be a substantial cost that needs not be. Youngsville, however, provides water, sewage service, and yes, at a fee, but how do they compare it? I have no information because the fact sheet listed zero cost for Eisenhower. How can that be? Some of this information was provided by the administration. I feel it should be looked at by an independent service. To make that information, or to take that information, the administration provided to make sure that that information the administration is provided is correct. I believe at the beginning, uh, it was mentioned about the bond. They didn't know what, they didn't know what the cost would be if that was defaulted square footage wise, or even if. <laughs> I think I would want to know what that cost would be. Mr. McKay, that, your time, time's up for me, please. Okay, I only ask, that you take all this information that you've heard tonight about everything here and please, please take it home, discuss it, and make a well informed decision tonight so we don't have to do this again in 10 years. Thank you.
evening. I'm a physician and taxpayer in Warren County. And I have a whole speech prepared, but I actually do have those numbers for Troy. I went through your, all of your bills for 22 and 23, the year that you cited. Uh, you pay $10,868.04 to uh, CWM Environmental for Eisenhower Sewer. I've got the, the dates and the check numbers right here. I think I also sent that to y'all in email. Uh, Young's bill which is different from what you posted on your utilities. Um, my, uh, my speech um, proposed or you made a motion to send all Youngsville 9th and 12th graders to Eisenhower. That motion was voted on at the school board meeting. Now, we have an FAQ proposal. Some will go to Warren or some will go to, to Eisenhower based on whether they're east or west of 62. Your motion and your proposal are two different plans. How can you amend your proposal? without another meeting for me and vote. Not to mention that you just have not thought this through. You're putting in all this, all this extra stress and strain on these kids. I want to ask the board, does anyone on the board think that extracurricular activities are important? That you go to college? Any apply for scholarships? Try to get accepted into law school or medical school? Does anyone here think that the excessive commute times to Eisenhower for students in the Western attendance area will affect participation in sports? Dance or band? I'm sorry, but I don't think rode the bus for over two hours each day to go to school looks as good on a college application as traveling with my high school band to play in Ireland. Do you? Hello, Eric Lawful. I'm from 
Whitfield, and of course, I mean, Hill and State B again. The quote from the letter that the Warren County School District sent out around September 16th of this year, that Warren County School District, the safety and security of our students and staff is our number one priority. That is true. Gunnsville will not be one, one of the schools to close. School shootings occurring more frequently, one being as recently as September 4th in Winter, Georgia, where two resource officers did not stop a shooter before four were killed, nine injured. How about the worst school shooting of Virginia Tech on April 16th, 2007? 33 died, another 17 injured. How about 75 stabbings in schools during 2023? There's been research done that shows that resource officers prevent some violence, but not shootings in schools, and therefore require outside police response as quickly as possible. Member of our community came across a place collapse in Sugar Grove just recently. After being on scene for 22 minutes, the ambulance left the scene with the victim, and the police officers hadn't even had a chance to get there yet from where they were coming from. And just think, Eisenhower's even further out than Trigger Road. March 23rd, called fire and ambulance response made by Eisenhower High School. Took the land of fire department 26 minutes to get there. Ambulance took 20 minutes. A similar call was made for Youngsville. Took the Youngsville Fire Department 12 minutes. Took the ambulance only four. Police response time to Youngsville High School for a call, one minute, 44 seconds. I'm currently waiting on information regarding response time to Eisenhower and Warren. That's covered by the state police. Everybody here is smart enough to realize that's over 10 minutes on a good day instead of going from Starbucks if they have to get parents. Where are the odds of that, though? Probably none. Now, uh, Warren General Hospital, let's see about the distance there. Eisenhower, 20 minutes. Youngsville, 15. Warren, 8. Sheffield, 17. Warren and Youngsville are the closest, meaning that ambulance can get there and transport the individual to the hospital quicker out of those two schools. What about the man hunt from White Borough? I'm sure everybody remembers that. Where was base camp set up? Youngsville Fire Department. Why? Is its central location close to spot, close to proximity to state police in Starbrook? How about a safe haven in case of an evacuation of the school building or an active shooter or other event? Youngsville High School? Kids can go to the fire department or a church on Davis Street. Both have bathrooms, heat, and even working kitchen. Trying to get there, they got houses, trees, cars, items of that nature, and kids can use as cover while moving to these places. Evacuation Eisenhower, kids have to cross an open field, an old building that can't fit all the current student body, let alone more. I'm sure this building doesn't have bathrooms, heat, and a working kitchen. Crossing an open field with no cover is extremely bad, dangerous, and a deadly idea during a shooting. Marines are required to shoot and hit moving targets at a distance of 200 yards. Now, while it's the individual may not be a Marine, may not have military training. How many people in this area hunt? Right there is enough knowledge of a firearm to be able to shoot 200 yards. Targets to be shot at from the waist up of an average human being. So, I mean, I can tell you something. It's go ahead, cross the field. Not going to fare very well. In closing, as much as we hope injuries don't happen, we have to be realistic and live in the real world. In emergency, every minute counts. Means the difference between life and death. School shootings and violence are becoming a more current crisis and we have to prepare for anything. This is the biggest job as, our, as parents, guardians, and teachers, and anyone with any responsibility for the safety of the kids in this district. Thank you.
first thing is, I have a 14-year-old daughter. We live on Gilbert Connors Road. I also have a 16-year-old son. My 16-year-old son had the choice to go to Tennis or go to Youngsville. He chose PA Cyber. My 14-year-old daughter at this point is ready at that birth of whether to go to PA Cyber or Youngsville. If you tell her Youngsville, she has no other choice. Right now it's costing us $500 a month for her to be in volleyball. A sport she loves. She don't want to be homeschooled. You move her, it's gonna cost us fifteen hundred dollars for play volleyball for three months. We can't afford that. You talk about cost. Moving her to a different school is gonna be about nine thousand eight hundred fifty-five dollars for a school year and busing costs. That's a $5,000 difference from now. What are we really doing? That doesn't include the safety. That doesn't include what if something happens to her? What if something happens to me? I have medical problems. I have cancer. What if we have to go and pick her up because I end up back in Pittsburgh Hospital? Right now, it's a 20 minute drive to go pick her up. It would be a 45 minute drive for my husband if something happened to me and we had to go pick my daughter up. That's crazy. My son right now, it takes everything I have to get him up out of bed to go to PA Cyber. You've seen all these kids talk about PA Cyber. I have to wake him up for his live classes. My daughter is excited to go to school. She's up on her own, she's 14. She's up out that door on the bus and she gets up at six o'clock in the morning and is on that bus at 6.30. You move her, she doesn't get home now until four o'clock. She won't be home until five, 5.30. If you move her, she'll be getting on the bus at five, 5.30 in the morning. And guess what? She won't be as near as excited. And that's all I have to say. Mental health issues developed during critical years of human development. 
These projects are very crucial to the development of the smaller hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. Many know this affects radical thinking and emotional processing. Tony Watt, a head of sociology at the University of Texas, says writing, emotional and physical neglect, social disturbance and poverty of all of our increases in mental health and indicated by depression, eating disorders, substance use and abuse, and violence, isolation, and poor peer relations are important strains that have been linked to distress and destructive behaviors. Moving students would not only cause social disruption, but likely lead to larger mental health problems, which are often common among teens our age. I'm a fourth generation student at Youngstown Middle High School. I'm asking, can you be confident saying that if I was going to Eisenhower High School, can you believe that I won't be caused more stress by the move and the impact of other students that I am not aware of being in my classes? Can you be confident that the teachers won't treat me equally as they may at their other students and their sports for that matter? Will the coaches favor the other sports member? I am alongside many players at the Youngstown volleyball team. If I was moved to Eisenhower, are you sure that not only because of my ability to play volleyball, but because of where I went beforehand that I will still be playing? Will you be able to say that my education will not be affected? Teachers are able to work one-on-one -on -one with us at Youngsville. And not being able to work one-on-one -on -one can lead to emotional neglect that can affect my academics, my GPA, and my future due to being able to not understanding the content presented to me in the teaching that day. In larger classrooms, this is a big problem. Please take everything that is said tonight into consideration. Thank you for your time. Hi, 
I'm Joe Carr. Uh, there's really not a lot that can be said that hasn't already been said here today. I understand money problems. I understand budget issues. I'm not going to pretend to understand what it is you have to go through to make that budget work. That's why we elect you guys. What I do understand is that Youngsville is a great community. My parents moved me here when I was 10 years old in the year 2000 from Pittsburgh. Not because it was for a job, not because any money issues, nothing like that. The reason they brought me here was for the community. Youngsville has a great fire department, has a great police force. Everything needed is right in that town. The schools have always been great, up until apparently recently here. I just, I, I don't understand how you could, in all good conscience, take that away from people. Find a way. There has to be another way. Look, if money is the only problem, Find another way. Because closing down our school and destroying our little town is not the way. Because that's what will happen. That's one of the only things Youngville is still holding on to. If you take away that school, what's next? What dies next? Eventually the entire town. If you don't care about anything else going on, remind yourself of one thing. Who voted to put you in the chair you're sitting? And are they going to do it again if you make the wrong decision? Thank you.
Thank you for helping us raise funds to travel to Ireland this past spring, where the Young Slamorty Eagles received the award of Best Youth Band in the Limerick Ireland Parade and Competition. This is the fourth year for my son and daughter to participate in the Young Slamorty Eagle Competition Band. I credit this program for developing confidence, dedication, and determination in their academic life. Closing Youngsville Middle High School brings an end to the Youngsville Marching Eagles. My son participates in basketball and baseball. My daughter plays on the Lady Eagles softball team. They have played on the JV and varsity team. If they are to attend a different school, they will not have the same opportunity they have in the small school of Youngsville. Currently, my twins can walk to school. They can walk to practice after school and walk home. If they attend a different school, will an activity bus be provided? Because currently, the sports boosters have to raise funds to pay for the activity bus to get participating students in the fall sports of football, golf, and cheer cross country to Warren and back home. As a mother, I want what is best for my children. Staying in Youngsville, walking to school and activities is best for them. My twins are getting an excellent education. They're taking five high-level classes, two of which they will receive college credit for at Youngsville High School. Our county is currently undergoing a reassessment of property values. I haven't heard that this has come to an end. I have not received any information to know what the outcome of it is. I do not know if our taxes are going up or if our taxes are going down. You are making a major decision in closing schools without knowing the results of the future tax revenues on these properties. Thank you for your time. Good evening, folks. Um, over the past decades, the solution for the Warren County School District is always to take away from the online schools. Uh, never once have you looked inward to Warren to take something away. When is the last time that you gave something to the online schools? Well, I'm here to tell you, if you shut down these schools, you're going to be taken away from the Warren County School District. How many more kids are going to go inside them, PA side? This is a different world than it used to be. These kids go inside, how much per student is it? Gary? How much per student? No, no. Per kind of count. Okay, you take that away, we've got 25% of our students in Warren County are doing a cyber school now. We're doing something wrong. If you take these out of the community, you're going to see upwards of 40% of the children inside the school. How about looking north? The oldest school in the district is Beatty Middle School. The biggest problems you have in the district are at Beatty Middle School. How many counselors do you have in Beatty? How many principals do you have in Beatty? Shut Beatty down, send those kids to Warren High, put Shepherd kids back in their school, Close Youngsville Elementary, make them a K-12, you're closing buildings, you're saving money. Because if you don't, you're going to be losing much more money through cyber than what you're saving. If you guys don't wake up and realize these community need your schools, there's going to be a serious problem down the road. I know in Sheffield, if there's not a high school in Sheffield, there will be a school of some sort in Sheffield, and that money is going to come from out of Warren County School District's account. Whether it be a cyber school, a learning center, whatever it is, you can't afford it. Support your communities. Let's work together and make a great school district rather than trying to tear each other down. Thank you. Thank you. 
do it for the record. Good evening, board and administration. I expected a lot of things that were ha that are happening tonight to happen tonight. I expected the kids to do a great job, which they all really did a really good job from their parents speaking nice to other guys. Um, I expected, unfortunately, that there would be a few members of the public that behaved in what I would say would be a rude and disrespectful manner to those of you sitting on the stage. That's unfortunate that they made personal attacks and accusations of lies when you folks are working hard to solve a very difficult problem. Our communities have been mentioned many times tonight and that they're trying to grow and they need the schools in order to do that. But unfortunately, as they're looking at that, your financial picture and where you are is, is in the way, right? And you have two major things in front of you right now that are factual and can't be changed and they're your, uh, they're not under your control. Your enrollment is going down. Un un uh, uncontested, there's nothing that you can say about it. When I started an administration over 20 years ago, we had about 6,200 students in the school district and you're now 3,700 and something, whatever it is today. Um, those projections back at that time were, were not thought to be true. Everybody said it can't possibly be true that in 20 years we'll be down to this number of students, but here we are. At the same time, the financial picture of the district is also on a decline. The state funding is different, the reimbursement and charter schools is different, so everything is different. The state has been in a lawsuit saying that how they fund the schools at the state level is inappropriate, it's actually illegal, but they're not doing anything about it. So while they want the community, the schools to be in the communities, your picture is very, very dismal. Mr. Bauer mentioned COVID having a blip. COVID had a big blip in our financial trajectories. COVID it had an influx of over $20 million into the district budget that kind of gave that trajectory a little bit of a respite or a hop as we were going along. So as that reality becomes true right now, things become much more dire. Almost everything that I have ever read, seen while I was in the office um, by folks from the outside wanted to see the district have two schools. Geographically, two schools made the most sense. Right now you're talking about two schools, but nothing that I've ever read said that Youngsville was the right spot for the second school, or Eisenhower was the second spot for the, the, the second school. It was actually something that was mentioned here earlier by another gentleman talking about where is PennDOT, where is the state police, there in Starbucks. Um, so going to two schools and looking for that right location makes a lot of sense, and that's something that I think the board should look at. Um, from a financial sense. And while you look at that, not now, not this year, not next year, not two years, not three years, but as you look at your master facilities planning, which you really need to do, you you need to take a look at where it makes the best sense to get to a two school system. And in the meantime, use what you have, use what is, what is available and ready to go. And when it ages and, and you're ready to get into a new system, build it where it makes the most sense. Tonight I heard a lot about seeking data related, well I heard a lot of information, a lot of facts about safety. I hope that the board takes some time to actually seek uh, tangible data about safety so you can see actual response times, who's staffed, when they're staffed, when they're not staffed, because that's a big deal. And I do hope that you, you focus on, as Mr. Wartman said, and Mr. Dave Wartman, sorry, there's two Mr. Wartman here tonight. Um, focusing on providing the best education possible because that is going to bring people into our counties and it'll increase populations across the county, regardless of where you're living, if we're providing a good education for students. There's one very important element that you need to keep in mind. And is no this your, your, your time is up? You yep, last, last thought, last sentence. And I don't know that anybody in, in the audience knows this, I know that some of you on the stage do. If you're financially in a dire situation which you are headed towards and you cannot pay your bills, the state will come in and they will do this for you. They did it in Erie in 2017. You'll have much more control and be able to make things the best you can for kids if you do it yourself. Thank you.
further regarding the issue of the potential closure of the schools and wishes to do so in writing. Such comments should be addressed to the board secretary, Mrs. Taylor Triscuit. Any such comments received by Mrs. Triscuit uh, will be provided to the board for review and consideration. And also written comments received by Mrs. Triscuit prior to this evening's hearing will also be provided to the board after the board's consideration. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this evening's hearing.